SpaceX is nothing if not audacious. The 2018 awe-inspiring launch made Falcon Heavy the world's most powerful operational rocket, and at the same time, it made SpaceX the pride of America, causing Russia, China, and Europe to grow envious. And after a three-year hiatus, this monster still proves itself to be an engineering masterpiece, shocking NASA scientists with its latest launch. But when all is said and done, how powerful is it actually? Let's take a deeper look into it and more in today's episode of Great SpaceX. The Falcon Heavy, according to SpaceX's website, is 70 meters tall and can lift nearly 64 metric tons of payload to low Earth orbit, about twice the payload capacity of its closest competitor, United Launch Alliance's Delta IV Heavy. The rocket has two stages. The first stage has three engine cores. The center core is flanked and supported by two boosters. Each core is equivalent to the first stage of a Falcon 9 rocket and houses nine Merlin engines. The boosters separate after liftoff and land upright back on Earth, possibly to be used again. Meanwhile, the heavier center core aims for a drone ship, carrying its payload in the second stage. The 27 engines on the first stage of Falcon Heavy working together are capable of more than 5 million pounds of pound force of thrust at liftoff, which is equivalent to 22,819 kilonewtons. The same force as about 18 747 aircraft at full power. No, you heard that right. I'm talking about the Boeing 747 jumbo jets that you would see at airports. But not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, and I said it's not even up to ten. It's 18. 18 of those. That's basically a whole airport, which is crazy. In any case, the Falcon Heavy lifted off for the first time on February 6th of 2018 from Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral, Florida, using Launch Complex 39A that once hosted moon-bound Apollo astronauts and space shuttle crews. The rocket launched a red Tesla Roadster and a space-suited mannequin called Starman in an orbit around the sun that could extend past Mars. An estimated 100,000 spectators crowded the area's benches and beaches and roadways to watch the rocket launch. Millions more watched a live stream showing the launch and events afterward. As a quick note, that Roadster is still alive. A literal car is cruising out there in our solar system. And as the kids say, we are truly in the right timeline. And it'd be greater if one day, NASA's $10 billion machine, the James Webb Telescope, could capture a few moments of the first and only flying car in our solar system. It does seem like a stretch, but you never know, could happen. Not this year, maybe not next year, but sometime in the future, we might get that sweet money shot of that Tesla Roadster and Starman waving back at us through the lens of the James Webb. The historic Falcon Heavy launch made it the world's most powerful rocket in operation and the third highest capacity launch vehicle ever to reach orbit following NASA's Saturn V rocket and Russia's Inertia rocket, which are no longer operational. Additionally, the remarkable flight also demonstrates the three core rocket's reliability to launch a heavy payload to space. That's why nowhere did this launch echo as powerfully as in Russia. The private US company once again created a technical feat on which the Russian space industry has given up on, the successful launch of a rocket with as many as 27 engines. When SpaceX's Falcon Heavy debuted, China's aerospace community was mostly envious as their equivalent rocket, the Long March 9 rocket, speculated to be a copy of SpaceX's Falcon Heavy, would not be ready for another decade. All in all, the video of two boosters landing side by side left a powerful impression on the minds of the general public on the value of rocket reuse. Sadly, after two flights in 2019, this rocket was completely absent. But it wasn't until 2022 that the monster officially returned to the track with the USS F-44 mission. The Falcon Heavy took off promptly at 9.41 a.m. Eastern Time on November 1st, climbing steadily above the Florida coast on its way to orbit. A few minutes into the launch, two side-mounted boosters, which are slightly modified versions of SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket, peeled away from the center core of the rocket, 
As that center core continued to climb toward orbit, the boosters fell back to Earth, burning a subset of their nine engines twice and making a picture-perfect side-by-side landing just a few kilometers away from where they launched from. According to US Space Systems Command, SpaceX's first direct launch to geosynchronous orbit was a simply outstanding success. Meanwhile, SpaceX is working on a giant new rocket called Starship, which the company thinks will eventually take the baton from Falcon 9 and Heavy. Starship could launch on its first orbital test flight in the next few months and become operational within a year or two if all goes well. But demand for the services of both Falcon 9 and Heavy will likely persist for a considerable stretch despite the new vehicle's availability. As Phil Smith, a space industry analyst at the Virginia-based consulting firm Bryce Tech said, the Falcon 9 is an extremely popular and successful vehicle, and customers like that. So that'll be around for quite a while, and the Falcon Heavy, I have no reason to believe that it won't be either. The tooling for the system remains, so as long as the factory is able to produce them. SpaceX will provide that option from a marketing point of view. But still, how did the Falcon Heavy launch shock NASA scientists? When it was envisioned back in 2010, NASA's SLS was tipped to be the world's largest and most powerful rocket, in addition to being extraordinarily cheap and quick to build due to ample use of existing components, such as engines and boosters from the Space Shuttle program. But back then, the Starship was simply a concept, as was the Falcon Heavy, the first attempt at heavy orbital vehicle undertaken by SpaceX and roughly comparable in its payload capacity to the SLS. Then, in 2014, NASA Administrator at the time Charlie Bolden uttered a quote that would go on to be ridiculed and memefied ever since. Let's be very honest, we don't have a commercially available heavy lift vehicle. The Falcon 9 Heavy may someday come about. It's on the drawing board right now. SLS is real. Meanwhile, the SLS, with its countless delays and budgetary issues, has become NASA's most controversial project in recent years, perceived as an outdated, unnecessary money sinkhole, and a symbol of everything wrong with the industry. And for that, I have to say, what a shame. In short, NASA's SLS rocket is probably proof of the saying, don't count your chickens before they hatch, or don't put all your eggs in a basket. Let me know more of these sayings in the comment section down below. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.